The Poképhone is here. This is the brand new Poco X3 Pro. Guys, I totally understand why this, wait, hold up, this way up. I totally understand why the Poco brand is so, so popular with you guys, because it's what Poco does best, combining incredible specs with the value proposition. And that's certainly the case, at least with this X3 Pro. In this video, I'm gonna give you a closer look at what this device does. Before we talk about the device itself, let's take a closer look at the unboxing experience. So this is the Poco X3 Pro in my hand. First of all, you'll notice that Poco branding, it certainly stands out on the back. And then this particular color is phantom black, but it looks like a combination of gray, purple, blue, all merged into one. It looks very, very nice on the back. The back is actually a plastic back, but on the front, you do have a Gorilla Glass 6. And down at the bottom, you've got, check that out, in 2021, a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. I know that's gonna make some of you very, very happy. USB-C port down at the bottom, speakers. Right-hand side has that power button that also doubles up as a fingerprint scanner and the volume rocker just above that. The left-hand side is the same stroke micro SD card tray. And at the top, you have the IR blaster with the microphone. So on the front, you get this display. It's a 6.67 inch IPS LCD display. There is no AMOLED display, which is a little unfortunate to see, but I can understand why Poco have done this at this price point. Despite that, it is a very, very nice display. And with that larger display size, it's gonna be good both for viewing YouTube videos, multimedia, playing games, I certainly have noticed this display doing a very, very good job. Now, in terms of touch sampling, this comes with 240 hertz touch sampling. It also has support for 120 hertz refresh as well. So it means scrolling and just viewing overall on this display is gonna be smooth and very, very nice. So speakers down at the bottom, and there are also speakers there at the top. Now, speakers generally are actually okay, but the only issue is, is when you're holding this in landscape, when you're playing games or watching videos, it can muffle the speaker sound down there at the bottom. So let's take a moment to talk about performance. This is powered by the Snapdragon 860 chip, which is a seven nanometer chip paired up with the Adreno 640 for the GPU, for the graphic work. Now, this particular model that I've been using has eight gigabytes of RAM with 256 GB of storage. This is also available in a six gigabyte variation. There is a slight difference in terms of pricing, but honestly, if you want my advice, I would go with the eight GB, particularly if you are planning on playing games, multimedia, multitasking on this, it just makes a bit more sense to do that. Now, in terms of gaming, gaming experience has been quite pleasant because not only do you have that chipset, the RAM uh, combination, but you also have that 120 Hertz uh, refresh rate with the 240 Hertz of touch sampling. That means the overall experience on gaming, graphic intensive gaming like Asphalt 9, PUBG, those other titles are actually quite nice. I've enjoyed playing games on this. In terms of game duration and whether or not the phone gets hot, so I've been playing this for about 20 to about 45 minutes, uh, pushing it in terms of graphic gaming, and I've noticed the back of the phone does get warm, but nothing that's unusual. There are a lot of other smartphones that do the same thing, so you don't need to be worried about heat that stops you from the gaming experience. So software, this is powered by Android 11, and it also has MIUI 12 on top of that, which is essentially a skin. I've spoken about MIUI 12 recently as well. It's not to everybody's liking, but generally it has improved considerably over the past iterations of MIUI. There's less of the bloatware, there's less of the ads, but they are there in certain areas of MIUI 12 as well. So if that's not your type of thing, just be aware of that. But in terms of customization, there are benefits to MIUI 12 with a whole host of different things that you can customize to get that experience that's just right for you. As far as battery life is concerned, what's it like? Well, you'd be happy to know that this comes with a beast of a battery, 5,160 milliamp hour battery. And even for heavy users like myself, I was getting close to a day and a half 
almost two days worth of use with a single charge, which is incredible. Now, yes, you don't have the AMOLED display. There aren't certain other features that are turned on uh, like 5G, which are draining on the battery, but it's still an incredibly good amount of battery life. Now, there aren't the bells and whistles like reverse wireless charging or even wireless charging, but it does come with that 33 watt fast charger right out of the box. And in terms of charge times, all the way from zero to about 100, it took me just over an hour to get that fully charged up, which is again, incredibly impressive. So on the back of the Poco X3 Pro, you'll find that quad camera setup. It looks very similar to the previous generation, but as far as specs is concerned, it's made up of a 48 megapixel f1.8 for the main sensor, eight megapixel f2.2 for the ultra wide. You get a two megapixel f2.4 for the macro and the same two megapixel f2.4 for the depth. So as far as using the camera is concerned, it's really easy. The interface is what you would expect from a Xiaomi phone if you've used one in the past. There are easy access to toggles and switching between the different lenses is also very easy to do. Now, as far as the image quality is concerned, what you'll notice is that you do get this four to one pixel binning and that produces a 12 megapixel shot uh, for the images taken. You can take full res 48 megapixel images and they give you more detail, but generally the photos taken do a good job in normal well-lit situations. So you get balanced dynamic range, you get a good uh, sort of range of accurate colors as well. Ultra wide and uh, anything up to about 2x of zoom is pretty decent, but when you start zooming into a maximum of 10x zoom, you'll start to notice more noise and more distortion in those images, even in well-lit situations. Portrait shots on the Poco X3 Pro are pretty decent because you get good differentiation between the subject and the background, that kind of bokeh effect. This also comes with a macro lens, and I've said this in the past in many videos, I'm not a fan of macro photography because I don't see a day-to-day -day real use of that, but if that is your thing, uh, then that's certainly available in the Poco X3 Pro. However, the macro shots really didn't impress me at all. There's just this overlay of over-processing that you'll notice and of exaggeration on the colors front as well. Now in low light scenarios, the camera does a decent job. You'll notice that again, in ultra wide, it's pretty lacking when it comes to uh, quality, but with the main sensor, you do get, particularly with the night mode activated, some decent level of information, detail in those shots that are taken. Now, as far as video is concerned, this will record a maximum of 4K at 30 frames per second, even though the chipset and the RAM configuration could uh, record 4K at 60 frames per second. That's a little unfortunate to see, but this isn't really a camera focused smartphone. So this will take 4K at 30 frames per second. And as you can see from some of these examples, it does a pretty decent job in both normal lighting, but also in low light as well. Okay, so here's a quick test of the video and what it looks like on the X3 Pro. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, but also what you think of the audio as well. Like I said, it would have been nice to see 60 frames per second included on this, but I think it does a pretty decent job. Now on the front, you have that 20 megapixel front facing selfie shooter with an aperture of f2.2. You're able to also record video at 1080p at 30 frames per second with that front facing selfie camera. In summary, I mean, what more can I say? I understand why Poco is so popular and they've done it again with the X3 Pro because it's the specs and incredible competitive pricing. Are there limitations? Of course there are. As I mentioned, the camera limitations, some would say even the display not being AMOLED, but look, if you're looking for a mid-range smartphone, you're happy with the size, you're happy with the spec sheet, really this is an incredibly priced uh, mid-range smartphone because the full 8GB with 256 variation that I've been using is gonna set you here in this part of the world just over 1,000 dirhams, slightly less for the six gigabyte variation, which is an incredible, incredible price. All the details will be in the description. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Would you like one of these? Also let me know, and I'll see you over here for another awesome tech review. Go, click it.